Here we go. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, when we're finding all the zeros, right, in your homework and so forth, you could either factor it, right? Um, or remember the ones that were kind of bigger polynomials, I said, hey, here's a factor. Find all the rest of the zeros. So then you apply synthetic division, all that kind of stuff, and it made sense, right? But if you had a linear problem, you just solved it. If you had a quadratic, you'd use factoring or completing the square, quadratic formula. But what about if we have a big polynomial that's going to look something like this, right? We're going to be kind of dealing with an issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you guys two different tests that we can use that are going to help you kind of with your problem, all right? The first one that you're going to want to write down is the rational zero test. So remember, when we were talking about rational zeros, well, when we were talking about describing our, our zeros, we either had rational, irrational, and real or complex. All right. So rational numbers, Noah, are just going to be, remember, all numbers that we can write in fractional form. All right? They're not going to be irrational. They're going to be numbers that we can write in fractional form. So to find the rational zero test, what we're going to do is the rational zero test all rational zeros are all possible rational zeros in simplest form come into taking the factors of plus or minus p over q. So it's the factors of your p over plus or minus your p over your q. So then you say, what, what is p and q? 16 is our p. 4 is our Q. Okay? Yeah, of course, right? I mean, Sam, it's just like natural. Come to. So now, to, so to do this problem, I'm going to ask you, hey, state all the rational zeros. That's going to be a test question. And you'll ask, you know, hey, find all the rational zeros. So you have to remember P and Q. So let's go through it. Let's figure out what P is. All the factors of P. So we go up to 16. You guys can do the factor tree if you need to. But hopefully, um, we can kind of go through it. So p equals, so the factors of p are equal to plus or minus 16. And let's go from largest to smallest. 16 plus or minus 8 plus or minus 4 plus or minus 2 and plus or minus 1. Does everybody agree with me? Those are all the factors, plus or minus of them? But it is a factor. So yes. Then we're going to do Q. So let's do all the factors of Q. Well, this one's not as bad. Plus or minus 4, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1. All right. So I think when you guys are getting started, it's helpful just to take your P over Q and write out all the factors of each P or Q, plus or minus. Because then, now what we need to do is we need to match them up. So it's all listing all the possible rational zeros are going to be all of your all your possible p over q's. So we could have p over q is equal to plus or minus 16 divided by 4, comma, plus or minus 16 divided by 2, comma, plus or minus 16 divided by 1, comma, plus or minus. 8 divided by 4, comma, plus or minus 8 divided by 2, comma, plus or minus 8 divided by 1. I'm writing this all out so you guys can see it. You don't need to write out every single solution. You'll see we're going to cancel them out. No, no, no. You're going to want to write this down for your notes right now. But I'm saying for on a test, you don't need to go through this whole process. You guys will get used to it, and you'll see what you can leave out and what you need to write down. Then let's go to 4, plus or minus 4 over 4 comma, plus or minus 4 over 2, comma, plus or minus 4 over 1, comma, plus or minus 2 over 4, comma, plus or minus 2 over 2, comma, plus or minus 2 over 1, comma, plus or minus 1 over 4, comma, plus or minus 1, I'm running out of space, plus or minus 1 over 2, or I'm sorry, yeah, 1 over 2, comma, plus or minus 1 over 1. Okay. Now, you guys can see there's all, look how many possible zeros we have. Well, there's two, right? There's positive and the negative. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, and 30. 
you have a total of 30 possible rational zeros, but we haven't simplified this yet, have we? So what we're going to do is let's go through and see how many um, redundant answers we have. So I do p over q equals plus or minus 16 divided by 4. We can simplify that, right? Plus or minus 4. Is there any other answer that's also 4? Well, that one's 4. Plus or minus 8 divided by 2. And plus or minus 4 divided by 1. All right? So I just kind of wrote the answer twice. I did this so you guys can see why I have multiple answers. But on a test, you guys, you know, if you need it, then use it. But you don't have to go back through. So let's go to the next one. Plus or minus 16 divided by 2. Well, that reduces down to 8, right? So do we have any other answers that are also going to equal 8? Well, yeah, plus or minus 1, right? So we'll just cancel that one out. We don't need to worry about that. Yeah, because it's the same answer. Then let's do plus or minus 16. I know that's going to be the only answer. Then we could do 8 over 4 reduces down to 2, plus or minus 2. Well, do we have another problem where it's going to be plus or minus 2? Yeah, we have plus or minus 4 over 2 and plus or minus 2 over 1. And 8 over 4. Well, that's what I reduced oh. down to there. Comma. Then let's do plus or minus 4 over 4, which we know reduces down to 1. <laughs> So therefore, let's see, where else do we have that? Well, we have 2 over 2, which goes to 1, and 1 over 1, which goes to 1. All right? So you guys kind of see how we're knocking out a lot of these extra answers that are the same thing. Now, let's go over to our fractions. So we have plus or minus 2 over 4, which is 1 half, right? Do we have another 1 half? Yeah, we have 1 half right here. That reduces down. And then we have plus or minus 1 fourth. OK? So we don't know right now what the zeros are, right? I haven't showed you how to find the zeros. All I've simply to showed you how to do is if there are rational zeros, we haven't even shown if there are, but if there is a rational zero, it is going to be one of these numbers. So now you can see there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, um, 14 different possibilities. Does that make sense? Is everybody kind of following me what I did? So on a test question, like I said, they'll say, hey, state the number of possible rational zeros. These are not all your zeros, because we know looking at to the fifth power, right? you can't have this many zeros. right? Am I talking about our powers and zeros and stuff? But these are all the possible zeros. Why did we have that? Good question. Well, if these were all zeros, 